Reason number four, to walk in sexual purity. It avoids God's judgment. It avoids God's judgment. And here we see even more clearly the seriousness and the urgency of this issue of purity. Here comes the warning from God's word. The rest of verse 6, that no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you. Why should we avoid wronging others in this matter? Because Christ is an avenger. He is a judge, a punisher. If you wrong others through sexual impurity, you will answer to the God who defends those have who have been wrong. That's the point. Do you know how sometimes you can have a young man who's in a relationship with a young woman and he's very aware of her father uh, in that relationship? This is especially true if you have an, a particularly intimidating man who's in the father role. Uh, the young man might need to talk to the father. All he's aware of in interacting with this girl is the father because, you know, it's been told to him in one way or another, if you even think about messing with my daughter and mistreating my daughter, he knows he's going to answer to someone. It's similar to what you have in this text here in verse 6 in terms of the, the train of thought, only here it is far more intimidating and far more sobering. The Lord is an avenger. This is, the warning could not be more solemn and more sober. He will avenge those who are wronged through sexual immorality. The wrath of King Jesus will fall on, on all who persist in living a life of sexual immorality. The sexual immoral will not enter the kingdom of Christ. The Lord is an avenger in all these things. It is a solemn warning. You remember Ephesians 5, beginning in verse 3. This is the warning. It's the same one. <coughs> This is Ephesians 5, beginning in verse 3. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you, as is proper among the saints. For you may be sure of this, every one of you, sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you, it says, with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. You say, what's the, what is the big deal about, about walking in purity and about pursuing purity and why does everyone have to make such a big deal out of whether or not I'm living in purity? Because sexual impurity is a rejection of God and it brings his, his vengeance upon us. And this is a warning that professing believers need to hear. I believe, I believe that on, that on that final day, there will, be, there will be many professing believers, faces that we know, people we know, who spent their lives in hidden, 
sexual immorality, hidden from others, deceiving themselves, blind to their own sin, blind to the condition of their souls, and they will be shocked to discover on that day that the sexually immoral will not enter the kingdom of God. I see them standing before Christ on that day. Did we not call you Lord and Savior? We were a part of the church. And he will shake his head and say, away from me, I never knew you. The Lord is an avenger in these things. And our capacity, our capacity for self-deception at this point is, is so great. It is so much greater than we realize. The self-deception, because even this could be going on even right now. Some of you living, claiming to be followers of Christ, but you are living with Hidden, sexual, unrepentant sin in your life. And, and if, that's where, if that's where you are, you are not living like someone who is on their way to heaven. And, and there's a good chance that, you are, that you're not a Christian. I'm, I'm not talking about those of you who, who fight and who strive and who are confessing and you weep and you repent. That's a, that's a part of the Christian life. Those of you who have given yourself over to these things and you are hiding it from everyone and no one knows about it. All who live a life of sexual immorality will not enter the kingdom of heaven. The Lord is an avenger in all these things. Purity avoids God's judgment by displaying the reality of his grace in our lives. And if that's, if that's where you are today, I want to plead with you. I want to plead with you that it's not, it's not too late to repent. It is not too late to confess your sin to God and to others, and to turn from your sin. If you are hearing this today, and that's you, do not harden your heart. If you're, live, if you're in an adulterous relationship, do not harden your heart. There is grace for you. If, you. if you will only step into the light, if you will only go to Christ, and receive the forgiveness. Stop living a life with two faces and draw near to him and he will extend his grace to those who confess their need for it and repent and you will experience the cleansing flow of his blood that covers all our sins.